support for my church members, family, friends, and through their guidance and countless hours in prayer, God finally reassured me that he was in control. I learned through this experience the importance of trusting God and turn, turning toward him and surrounding yourself in a Christian community, especially in those times of suffering. Other struggles came from those of loved ones <laughs> passing away, including friends from high school, my grandfather, and most recently my great uncle during my time at Westminster. On a more day-to-day -day level, I struggled with time management. Nothing has changed since seventh grade. I still want to do everything. Still other struggles stem from me being a religion major. I began to doubt a lot of the foundations of my faith, not to mention a lot of people would assume that I was very judgmental or closed-minded just because I was carrying around that title of a religion major. I have struggled with being involved with a number of broken relationships where I've been left completely lost and further questioning my identity. There are still times when these struggles are very real. I can stand here and I can tell you that I'm in love with Christ, that he is my rock and my salvation, but there are times when I have to remind myself that I am broken and that I cannot do it on my own. Before I finish, I want to share one more here I am moment that came my junior year of college in February 2011. It was at Jubilee Conference where I ran into close friends of mine from Ligonier Camp and Conference Center. This is where I worked the summer before. Ligonier is a wonderful place a place where I reconnected with my foundation and got to live in a community where day in and day out, people supported me in my relationship with Christ. Talking to one of the directors of the camp, Jim Paul, I explained why I could not go to, back to camp. I explained that I had not been living my life fully following Christ's example. I was too broken. He convinced me that there was no such thing and he wanted me to really stop turning away and submit. I broke down and cried in front of Jim that night, and I hate crying in front of people, so that was a terrible experience, but I walked away from that conversation knowing where I'd be going that summer. God was telling me to stop turning away and just go. Walking into the large group session, one of my favorite people in the world, Salim Gabril, the person who had led Pittsburgh Project um, during my high school years had, and had been a huge inspiration, he was now standing on stage speaking to thousands of college students. But when I settled down in my seat, I felt like he was talking to just me. The passage of scripture he was reading was Exodus 3, the story of Moses and the burning bush. As Alex so beautifully read earlier, Moses' story is much like my own. A story of being called and a story of responding with, here I am. I'm ready to be your servant. Yes, I'm going to give you excuses. I'm going to tell you that I'm not good enough. I'm going to tell you that I'm terrible at public speaking. And I'm going to ask the question, who am I that you are calling me? Forgetting that God is sending me. Forgetting that he is going to be with me. And as much as I turn away, he is a faithful God that has plans for my life. When Moses approached the burning bush, he was approaching holy ground, approaching a place where God was present. If you recall from this story, Moses is afraid, is afraid to look up at God. I can connect to Moses in this moment. I know that feeling, that feeling when you're in the presence of, a, of God, but you feel ashamed for who you are. I believe that God is telling the people of Israel in Exodus 3 that I see you, I hear you, I feel your pain, and I'm coming to your rescue. The brokenness of their lives is not hidden from God. The cries of the people are not unheard. And God responds to their cries. He comes to the rescue by sending his servant Moses in the same way God hears our cries. When he sent his son, Christ, he absorbed the fullness of our struggle by dying on the cross. He sent his son, but he is also sending us. In chapter 3.10, he tells Moses, so now go. All those excuses that Moses made, all those excuses that we make, we are saying to God, I don't trust myself and I'm not good enough, but more so we are saying, we don't trust you and you are not good enough. It is true we may not trust ourselves and we aren't good enough. As it tells us in Romans 3.23, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But the good news is the fact that God is good enough and he is a faithful God that responds to our cries. Hearing this message at Jubilee led to one of those moments of recommitment that I mentioned earlier, a fur and further a testimony to God's unfailing grace in my life. When I walked into that main group session, the words were huge across the screen, here I am. Those words reminded me, stop questioning, stop doubting, just go. I ended up working at Ligonier that summer and returned to school my senior year feeling refreshed, feeling reconnected to my foundation and feeling a new sense of humility overall ready to take on my senior year by living in Christ. 
As for my questions and doubts, Dr. Na can attest that my passion for talking about theology has not ceased. I can't tell you how many times I stop by his office unannounced and bring up some random topic like questioning the authority of scripture, discussing C.S. Lewis, why is there suffering in this world, how can we defend women preaching from the, in the church, and just yesterday quantum physics was mentioned. Keeping it light, of course. <laughs> Um, how about that random time that I asked to clarify the words here I am in Hebrew? Not so random now. Don't worry, Dad, there's not a tattoo yet. <laughs> and I leave, as I leave Westminster, I can reflect on all the struggles, or I can reflect in all those times that I turned away from God. But for every one of those moments of feeling helpless or lost, I can tell you a number of times where God's grace, mercy, and love were overflowing. Moments when professors took their time to offer advice and sport, it, uh, support and inspire me to go above and beyond. The moment I got to travel to Italy, where I fell in love with their culture and art, the passionate words of John Keats, and of course the humility of St. Francis. The moments when close friends stayed up with me into the late hours of night in the night as I finished work that I clearly procrastinated on and could have finished way in advance. Moments when sorority sisters dropped everything to cry with me and to laugh with me. The moment we won packs in tennis, or more so, the incredible four years spent with what we all considered to be a second family over a team. Moments where people in this community have opened their doors to welcome me as nothing less than family. Moments in FCA where we would un uncover the truth of God's love being like water that is ever flowing, and as it pours through the broken clay jars that we are, the water reaches others through those cracks. These are the moments that I am eternally thankful for, and these are the moments I attribute to God pouring into my life, and these are the moments I will never forget. As my senior year comes to a close, I want to end where I began, with the words, here I am. As we seniors graduate and we enter the world outside this Westminster bubble, we are going to run into struggles, into challenges, into those times when we question who we are and where we are going. I encourage you as I encourage myself to never stop listening for the call of God in your life. Those urges of him calling you to simple acts of kindness or an entire vocation, whether it is big or small, I encourage you to respond as a humble servant, trusting that he will be dire directing you and be with you every step of the way. I am blessed to know that I have an internship at Ligonier Camp after I graduate and it following the year after that internship into seminary. But where exactly God will be taking me as I embark on this journey is a story that I'm not fully aware of. A story I have to leave up to the author, because if I'm being truly honest, this was never my story, but his story. A story that I'm grateful to be a part of, and a story I know I will always want to tell. Could you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, you are incredible. You never cease to amaze me with the continued blessings that you pour into our lives. Even when we find ourselves drifting or turning away from God in your call, I thank you for never letting go. For netting, never, oh, thank you for letting us be a part of your story. And as we leave this place, I ask that you fill us with your spirit, providing us with guidance, wisdom, and strength for the journey ahead. For it is only in your identity that we will find rest and reassurance. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>